Meta, aka Facebook, has a new VR headset called Project Cambria coming later this year. If you were going to get an Oculus Quest 2 or Meta Quest 2, should you wait for it? Maybe not. Here's why. So here's everything we know about Project Cambria, which may not be the actual name, of this headset that Facebook slash Meta, Meta or you know Facebook, is coming out with. So Meta has been focusing a lot on VR, AR, and the metaverse lately. Last fall, Meta redefined the entire company to focus on the metaverse. But aside from that, the Oculus Quest 2, which got renamed to the Meta Quest 2, is a great affordable VR headset. And that's been out for about a year and a half now. That came out at the end of 2020. The Quest 2 at $300 is a price that hasn't been beaten, and it probably won't be beaten. And when we look at what Meta has in store for its next VR headset, Cambria, it doesn't look like that price is gonna be anywhere near what the Quest 2 was. In fact, Meta has confirmed that it's gonna be over $800. That's a lot of money. Now, most people find it hard to think about getting a $300 VR headset. An over $800 VR headset is probably not for you. So then what's the point of this next VR headset? It's gonna be professionally oriented. And it's also gonna to point to where headsets like the Quest 3 are gonna go next. So one thing that VR doesn't do all that much is mix things with the real world. That concept, mixed reality, is kind of like AR, augmented reality. Things like smart glasses or the Microsoft HoloLens, Magic Leap, things that can look at the real world and overlay virtual objects into them with these transparent lenses. What VR headsets are starting to do is pass through stuff from the outside world from the camera feeds and overlay virtual objects while you're in VR. So you can see the real world and see VR mixed. Kind of feels like AR, but it's really still a VR headset. So anyway, that's what Cambria is really all about. Basically, it's going to be a headset that does better pass-through to create these mixed reality experiences. And it might also be a more powerful headset too, but we don't know the full details. Mark Zuckerberg recently demoed some of what Cambria can do, and it's really about that color camera feed of the real world overlaid with these objects. The video looked not that wowing, but I've seen technology using this in person that's been really impressive. A super expensive headset made by a company called Vario that I tried last year did this type of stuff. The Vario XR3 was able to pass all of this world around me through its cameras and overlay VR and it started to feel really convincingly real and it also felt pretty freaky. I was able to put a giant car in my room, I was able to uh, put things on my table, have objects that you know almost seem real and it, it's pretty fascinating for things like training and for things like simulation. Now Meta is also going to have eye tracking on this headset and probably face tracking and the resolution of the display is meant to be better. All of that stuff is really pointing towards professional use. Now what do you need eye tracking for? Well, the PlayStation VR 2 is going to have eye tracking. Probably Apple's next headset or first headset is, that we're expecting is going to have eye tracking. A lot of that technology can involve not just being able to have your eye contact on avatars to make interactions in the metaverse more realistic, but it could also improve graphics by only focusing on the stuff that your phobias, the center of your eyes, are looking at so that that stuff is high res and the rest is blurred out. That's called foveated rendering, and it's kind of what your eye does anyhow, and that enables VR to use less processing power and have potentially longer battery life. Also, eye tracking can do things like you know, if you want to grab this thing in the distance and you're actually looking at it, kind of combines the controls and improves them. But there's all sorts of questions about privacy. How does that data get tracked? Where is it being stored? Um, how secure is it? But all of that stuff does suit a simulation and professional market and, and an enterprise market even more because those pro headsets all do have eye tracking for the most part. That mixed reality part that the Cambria does, which sounds interesting, you know, the Quest 2 already does that as well. It just does it in grainier black and white because its pass-through cameras can only do that. 
And there are already some experimental apps that are out there that are already playing with this. Meta is intending to keep pushing that development through something called the Presence Platform, where people can develop apps in Quest 2 that will also work on Cambria. So that's kind of like a bridge there. And also there's going to be an app that's available through Meta's App Lab called The World Beyond, which is kind of like this showcase of how mixed reality could work even better. And that's going to be available for Quest 2 people to see and eventually will be on Cambria. So, you know, really it doesn't seem like the Pro headset is going to be for most people and it won't be priced for most people. Now, at some point there will be a Quest 3 and we're expecting that's going to come next year. And whatever that is, that could be something that works some of the technology that's in Cambria and boils it down to something that's more affordable. Again, that's really speculative, but if you're waiting to get an affordable VR headset, don't because I don't think it's coming this year unless you want to get a Quest 2. And the Quest 2 is still great. I mean, aside from any of your thoughts about how you feel living inside Facebook slash Meta's umbrella, the software, the games, the experiences, the hardware are fantastic and they still remain really unbeaten and there are a lot of different things you can do with it. There are still a lot of games coming out for it and there's still a lot of experiments and, and things because it's really one of the most popular platforms out there for VR. So from a buying perspective, I just say get the Quest 2 or stick with the Quest 2 and don't worry about it. And then if you really don't feel like getting it, then you could just wait for whatever comes further down the road. What does it mean for the whole landscape? Well, like if you want to pull all the way back, nobody's made AR glasses yet. So we're still waiting for those, like real everyday AR glasses. But Meta's already playing around with things like, you know, Ray-Ban Stories glasses that are camera-enabled, microphone-enabled glasses. Google's starting to experiment around with smart glasses. There are a lot of ones with limits, but haven't gotten to full AR yet. And as, they are, as the road is trying to be built towards making those, in the meantime, you have these bulkier VR headsets that are going to be playing around with AR and trying to get there, with eventually those two maybe meeting in the middle, but it could be years away. So that's the whole reason why it's happening. Do you really need it? Yeah, maybe not. But it'll be really interesting to see what comes out of it, and it does seem pretty key to where a lot of these companies are going. Well, if you have any questions, uh, let me know down below. But anyway, I hope that explains some of the stuff for you and lets you know a little bit about what to expect from VR in the year ahead. And keep in mind, the other big one, PlayStation VR 2, is going to probably change the game just as much.